Uh, so, good day, comrade subscribers. We're at 783. Uh, it's Wednesday, uh, Thursday. <laughs> it's Thursday, uh, January 18th, I believe, 2023. Um, had a delivery, a uh, NTSC uh, VIC 20. Um, it was pretty cheap. Um, basically, it, it was, the postage cost more than the machine itself. Fortunately, it doesn't work. Oh, wife's trying to call me. I better answer it. Okay, so wifey's on her way home uh, from work. What was I going to do? Oh, yeah, anyway, so I got a, an NTSC VIC. Unfortunately, it doesn't work, but not a problem. Um, wasn't described as, as working. Uh, but I, it, like I said, it was uh, the postage from US to Australia cost more than the VIC itself. And plus the Jerry Harvey 10% uh, tax. Uh, thank you, Jerry Harvey. Uh, story behind that. Anyway, um, it uh, it turns out to be cheaper than to buy a, a VIC-20 by itself in Australia. So anyway, so it worked out well. But the reason why I got it was I spied this in the photo. Um, I wasn't sure exactly what it was. Bit of wind on the garage door there. Um I wasn't sure exactly what it was, um, but yeah, it turns out to be another um, data set, uh, cassette recorder interface. This time, apparently, by a company called, and it came with instructions, so I think this is the original set, and there was a photocopied copy of this. So I've, I've actually scanned in the photocopy version. Um, unfortunately, it, it actually... So, okay, before we go on all that, yeah, here's the documentation. Um, so it's an audio cassette adapter interface for the VIC-20. Um, you know, ba so basically you can connect a, a standard cassette recorder. So I, I like to use my TI, my Texas Instruments program recorder, uh, to the VIC, as we've seen before with the Cardco Cardet uh, 1 version anyway so this is by a company called micro systems development and 1983 comes with um, an interesting little program uh, that will allow you to adjust the volume control um, on the cassette recorder which is handy um, so I have transcribed that I, I have typed that into a text editor um, so I'll, I'll give that a try in part two. Um, and it has another couple of programs here as well. So it's got some other uses it's talking about here. We've got a little circuit, a uh, sample program to produce a square wave here. Um, okay, so this is talking about um, output control. Uh, so the second method of output. Anyway, I've, I've uploaded this to archive, so you can have a look at it. I won't go read it for you. Uh, the program measures the time a pulse is low, up to 255 microseconds. Um, how long a pulse is high. So we've got some machine code programs there. Um, but before, yeah, so... Um, it's actually got more information. It's got um, the uh, the pinout because the card co one came with no information whatsoever. It's not just my one. Um, they, as far as far as I'm aware, they never produced any documentation for this at all. Um, so <laughs> well, it was pretty self-explanatory, but <laughs> you know you need to know what to plug into what. So this is actually quite good. This is quite good. So. Um, Maybe the build quality isn't as good as the card code. So we've got our remote. We've got this one to head. Oh, okay, so I assume this is to the headphone. So this would be ear, and this would be record, I guess. But let us open it up. And have a look. So it is, let's compare with the card air. So it is, oh, let's go out a bit. 
it is quite a bit smaller. Um, yeah, so this isn't keyed either, but you know which way to plug it in because I assume that's the top. I assume that's the top. Yeah, that's the way it plugs in. So yeah, so that's the first first difference. Now let's open this up. Hey, Phillips head screws that appear to be too big. Oh no no oh, no no they fit in they fit in. So let's zoom in. So oh, if you haven't skipped this part. <laughs> Please, 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 always read the, the video description. The way I, I do stuff is I pull things apart, identify stuff, then I do research, and I put the details into the video description. So quite often, okay, so that looks like, okay, that looks like it's been um, kind of hand done, whereas that one... Yeah, it's a little bit, anyway. Oh, okay. Fair enough. So here we go. I guess that's the read, read switch for the, um, for the remote control. Um, looks a little simpler. Um, where's my loop? So what have we got? You can probably see it better than I can. What have we got? We've got a, what's that? One, four, four. So it's Texas Instruments, AC, DC, one, zero, one. Okay, that's U1. And then we have a seven, four, one, four. Beside it. It's Rev A. And it be read switch up here. Uh, clear, clear, okay. All right, so what else we got? Okay, so this is the jumper switch here so that you can set whether it's um, negative levels or something. Let me just have a quick read. Set that down there for you. Uh, the jumper switch is, um, okay, the VAC even provides a polarity jumper that makes it possible to use to use cassettes that have a negative signal level. This makes it useful use uh, this makes it possible to use the VAC with most audio cassette recorders. Okay. So let's have a look. That is, I'm looking I'm trying to read this off the screen. That's 47 microfarads, 16 volts. Um, oh okay, 0.001 microfarad, one kilovolt. Okie dokie. Oh, and it's very, very nicely. We've got mic, um, remote, and ear. Nicely. So, okay, so this is a VAC. So this is the MSD VAC 200013. All right. So, cluster over like that. Hopefully, if uh, anyone wants to, I'll hold it like that so you can get a good look. And then on the bottom side, rather, rather large. This is <laughs> yes. seriously. Is that why you? This is why Americans call it solder, because it's actually spelled solder, not solder. Really? Is that why? Okay. So it looks like we've got a date stamp, 1983, 0783. Um, yeah, so pretty simple. Um, hmm. I would... I would push those down and solder them on, to be honest. That doesn't make much sense, really, doesn't it? That's a bit how you're going. If anything, put it down, um, solder these on, then you've got more mechanical strength. At the moment, you've only got the... Ooh, okay, so I'm going to fix that. 
Um, coming out, where does it go in? No, this way. Which way did it go in? This way. There we go. Okay. So, yeah, this is, um, there's a bit too much play there for my liking as well. I would probably, what would I do there? Let me hot snot it. Hot glue. Just to hold everything in place. Yeah. So there we go. So let me um, let me try and fix that up a bit. And I would probably let's zoom out. So that's Mike. Yep. Okay. So that's microphone. So that's record. So probably what I would do as well, which I want to do on the cardette, is just desolder this so that I can put some red heat shrink on here. I will do that in a minute. Okay. Okay, so I've, um, I've pushed those tabs down. I'm just going to solder them all, all on now just to give it a bit more mechanical strength. Actually, one thing I notice is F6, F6 here is grounded, um, which isn't done in the cardette, I don't think. Um, but it is specifically mentioned here, uh, cassette switch, ground. The um, reason why I mention that is that uh, Rick, Rick Mellick, Rick Mellick um, wrote, about, uh, wrote about this and he also recommended grounding F6 in this because it wasn't actually grounded. It, to to save, save something coming up on the Vic all the time. So that's um, that's interesting. Anyway, so I'm going to solder these now. Ready, ready. So I've now soldered, soldered the. Oh, come on, focus, 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 focus. Soldered the um, bottom half on. So now it's mechanically stronger. I've uh, desoldered the mic cable. So that I could slip a uh, some red heat shrink on, just so you know that that is definitely the mic. And I'm thinking of replacing this big fat 47 microfarad uh, capacitor with a modern version, <laughs> a little tiny one. So I might do that, and then um, put it all back together, and then um, part two will be. Me trying to type in those programs to see um, see if they work. All right, there we go. As you can see, I've modified it, so you can now press the dislike button because I've modified something that should never be modified because we should always keep things exactly as we found them. Um, all right, so I will now. That'll be it for this part. Let's um, let me hook it up and start typing in programs and see how we go in, in part two.